name is Jim Lewis. I'm the founder of Model Train Technology. And today's presentation is from the Train Fest X, the virtual Train Fest show uh, that highlighted a number of layouts and vendors. And so we had an opportunity to present. It's about 15 minutes long and we go fairly quickly uh, because that was our allotted time. And I just wanted to mention that we're going to aim the camera down to the workbench so you can zoom in and you can see what we're doing. So my body is chopped off for most of the presentation. If you have any questions, call me, uh, write an email to support at modeltrainman.com or visit our website, modeltraintechnology.com. Thanks for watching. Welcome to the uh, Model Train Show at the Train Fest. Uh, we used to live in Milwaukee. We're really disappointed we didn't get a chance to go there and uh, drink all the great beer and food. Anyway, we started about 18 months ago. Uh, I'm an end scaler, and my first layout was in 1968 with my dad. Uh, we moved down to Florida, and I built an end scale layout, and I wanted to have lighting in the cars. And so we have an HO scale car here in the front. I'll pull that back in a second to show the end scale. And uh, what we've done is we've invented and brought miniaturization to the masses. So this is our N-scale light board. This is our flagship product. It has a, a DCC decoder on it. We've passed the uh, first round. Well, we first, this board's passed the compliance with NMRA. So we got an, a manufacturer's number just recently. So we're excited about that. Uh, we have these things called super caps. And so these are tantalum capacitors. They're fairly expensive but they really help keep the lights on and they fit perfectly. My first car was an N-scale um, Amtrak car, actually this is it. And it, we made it 11 and a half millimeters so it fits inside the car perfectly and you just run the two wires up and Kato of course has the, the rail pickup so no big uh, deal there. Uh, I'm just gonna start with the HO over here because this also had, and this is controllable by our DCC system, uh, you can set the brightness, you can turn fade on and off, uh, the lights will blink, uh, you can put uh, alternate uh, red lights in there. And what I'm going to do is take this off the track, and I've, this is a Walters uh, 2995 car. So this just goes to show you that you can light any car with this. It doesn't come with the wheel pickups, uh, but let's show you the board first. It's super simple. This is our HO scale board. We have two sizes. This is the long uh, one, and then we have 192 millimeter, which fits typically the European cars or shorter HO cars that you might have. Uh, so pretty simple, just two wires. Um, and in this case, the pickups, we have something called floating brass. There are a lot of different pickups on the marketplace. Uh, we didn't want to get into that business, but we tried everything and it didn't really work. These are actually floating on the wheel on the wheel axle and because it wraps around the axle and is loose it has a lot of surface area and because it's not fastened to the truck uh, it doesn't pinch or bind the wheel so it doesn't add all that extra drag that all the other types that have the pinching of the wheel sideways or to the axle so that works really well so here's the here's the end scale car uh, we have uh, let's see let's get this one going and let's do that. So this is a car that we just did for, we're doing for a customer right now. They gave us uh, 15 cars. This is the Union Pacific uh, Los Angeles. And uh, we have uh, a couple of different things here. We used our end scale board inside under the lower level, but you'll see that the dome is also lit. We have an end scale, well, we use it as an HO as well, a dome board. This doesn't have a decoder on it, but you can cut this and that's what we did and fit it perfectly inside the dome car. So we just clipped it up and ran the, the wire. And our board has extra pads to connect to the mains as well as separately controlled rear LEDs uh, for, the, for the backlight. And I, I don't want to pick it up exactly, but you can see uh, we, we took out the little plastic stuff that Kato comes, uh, comes with Kato and we can separately control the lights, there's actually a light in the back one and we can turn them on and off and make them blink and flicker and Mars effect and so forth. So we were really excited about that. And then we, as I said, we got into uh, making this. Here's the N uh, HO scale 192 board, pretty simple uh, there. 
Uh, then we went into uh, customer sent us a sleeper car. So we widened the board slightly and ran LEDs on both sides. Now what's unique about this also, in addition to the decoder, in addition to this has 12 uh, super caps, uh, this also has a switch in power supply. So it's really cool and it doesn't take, uh, doesn't use any more power than the LEDs demand. Uh, this is affectionately called our Moab board, mother of all boards, because it's got everything on it. And uh, so that's very simple and you just put that in, two wires to connect to DCC and you're ready to go. We kept going. So then we decided we were gonna light caboose boards, cabooses, and we built an N-scale caboose. We sold more of these than any other product. And there's a super cap board that piggybacks on this, just like that. You can have two or even three if you want. This thing doesn't go out. And so one of the things about adding capacitors to decoder systems is they disable the CV uh, read and write function of the DCC decoder. Our super cap circuitry is built into the board. So it's only, the caps are only on when the lights are on. When you take it off the track or even in read or write CVs, you can disable it and the decoder will work just fine. So that's, uh, that's what that is. Just check the time. Okay, so we got there and then we said, okay, well, if we can light a couple of LEDs on a board, why don't we build a board where we can light 16 uh, channels on here? And that's what we did. This is our micro board. It's a DCC decoder uh, for lighting buildings. And, and uh, I'll show you in a second an N-scale building where we put this inside. You can see it's pretty thin. And uh, it will run off of DCC, it'll take power from DCC and light the lights that way. Or you can have auxiliary power and power and control with this small signal, it's a few milliamps uh, from DCC. So you're not drawing track power to light your buildings. All right, and then there's a test board and all sorts of things for that. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna take the, oh, let me show you what, I just talked about the caboose board. So here's the caboose with the lights on, there it is. Okay, so it, it just it just stays on. And one of the things about N-scale cabooses is they're very light, even if they have a weight inside, uh, they tend to bounce around, rock around at the back of the freight train. Uh, when they go over the slight bumps on the track where the connectors are, or just the dirty track, uh, the lights will go off. Uh, we have one super cap board in this uh, car, and let me see if I can just pop it open and show you that everything just fits neatly inside. Now, uh, we also, as we get into the building decoder in a minute, on the top of this, we have a, a chip. Uh, we, call them, we call them chips, and then we have an LED that lights the cupola. And if you can see in the back here, it's very small. Let's see if I can get that closer in. We have an N-scale uh, lantern. Now, you couldn't put even an 0402 LED in that, it's just too big. So what we invented was an LED dongle that connects to a half millimeter fiber optic, and we 3D printed the, the lantern. These things are so small, it's really hard to take a picture of them. This dongle with this lantern is inside and connected on this caboose. So really, really excited about that. So we've got a very cool layout, but all these different caboose lit up and so forth. All right, so the next thing we did is we expanded that out and said we wanted to have, people have bought a lot of Woodland Scenics products, the lighting systems, um, and they were connecting them up. Let me see if I can find it. Here. So here's a, all at Woodland Scenics with the JST plugs. It's called Japan Standard Terminal. And uh, so we built a controller with uh, animations already built into it. So if you're going out to buy an arc welding or a police car blinking or a couple of those things, uh, by the time you've purchased five or six of them, you've already spent $100. Our controller has all of those basic animations built into it. In fact, this building here just has regular LEDs inside, pretty simple stuff. It's lighting the car, it's lighting the lantern. Uh, there's over 5 million cap uh, possibilities of animation on the controller. And uh, so each, uh, what we've done is just plug the LEDs in here and ran them into the building. And this is a random sequence right now. It's also lighting uh, the cars. Let me unplug this. About seven or eight minutes into it, I think. And so this is the same controller as you just saw. 
Uh, we have clear case as well. And I'm going to just plug this in and turn it on. Uh, blue light says it's working. Let's see if I can get a good view there. Uh, the coder, decoder number 1234 ready to go. And now we set all of the ports, or 16 ports per controller, uh, to what's called step mode. And there's two variations, chase and race. And so this is just going back and forth. You can speed this up and slow this down. Uh, you can have it going one way instead of going back and forth. All of those are possibilities. So you could have a couple of these used to light a police car. Uh, you could have them uh, for the random building and, and so forth. So very simple. Uh, to program this, uh, in fact, if we want to just have this light here blink, I'm going to turn this into programming mode. Now the left-hand keys, see, uh, just move, select the LED port that you're going to control. We'll go back to one, and seven happens to be that step mode. We'll change it to three and save it. Go back into animation mode, and now you can see that pin one is just just blinking, just like we go. It's that simple, and it's for adding really great animation without any soldering, uh, without any programming. You don't need to know how what an Arduino is. You don't need to solder or learn C or Pasta or uh, Python. Uh, if you want to do that, that stuff's great. But here's a controller, and this will fit inside a uh, an HO building. And that's what we have here. And so we just put, uh, we use roomettes and we just put it in here and that's the same, same concept. All right, moving quickly. Try to get through the time here. So actually, I'm going to turn this around. So you can see, this is one of Woodland Scenic's smallest end scale buildings. And we put the decoder board into the back uh, using, and this, we just built a styrene case. And that just fits right on top. And I'm going to select that with my decoder here. Uh, loco happens to be 11. I'll run on top. Loco. There we go. So you can see I can control it, and the, the, all the decoder, the uh, the building decoder boards can either be multifunction uh, decoders or act as, as accessory decoders. So you can switch on each of the rooms. And in this one, in animation mode, uh, there's actually on the top right here, uh, when it's in animation mode, is a TV simulation. So really cool stuff. In, in this case, the, the light board is on the side, and this one it's on the uh, that perpendicular. All right, so we kept going. We did a partnership with a company called Dwarven. It's part of sort of wrap up in here in just a second. And we built and invented the fiber optic controller. So uh, fiber optics are useful for point lighting, we think. Uh, if you have a big light box, uh, then you can light other things. But if you want to control individual lighting, this is really a great solution. And one of the things that we did with this is just hooked up uh, a car and headlights. And here's two fiber optics pins coming out of the back. And we're going to just connect them up to the box. Do that. Get that in there again. Add power. So in this case, you can see the two lights. Uh, let me move that over. So you can see the two lights. They're set. Now what we have this set up for is uh, our detector. So we now have a slide under track detector. We have both infrared and magnetic. And let me see, get the power on here. Eight detectors per port. This without my glasses. There we go. Okay, turn it on. Let's fire up. All 
And I was in the software business for, for many, many decades, and they told you never demonstrate software. Well, you see, I just put all of this stuff together. And by the way, there's a timeout. Uh, you saw it stop, and we'll just have it run over the car again. So you can change that. Uh, there are two ways to change it. There's a mechanical pin on here that you can put a screw and screwdriver in, so from the top you can adjust it. And also the device has the ability uh, to... Uh, to change the timeout, you can overlap, switch switch controls with uh, multifunction controls, and so forth. And uh, just a couple of other bits. Uh, we do, and I'll wrap up here. I think that's about ten minutes. Uh, we have here the HO uh, lanterns. These have these do have LEDs on them. There's a kit that comes. That's for the HO. And then we also, if you purchase, if you work with the uh, the regular uh, animation controller, which has the plugs, but you want to have a couple of fiber optics, we have a fiber optic dongle. So, and you can put any one of uh, four different sizes of fiber optic in there from half a millimeter to one and a half millimeter. Run that out where you want, and then just plug it into the controller. And every port can be adjusted for brightness and, um, and of course, the effects. So I'm going to pause there, and uh, thank you very much for listening, and uh, pass it back to you, Mike.